Today I'm gonna to talk about the best plumbing systems for your new home. That's right, if you're building a new home, my best ideas, my ideas is if I was building my home, what products would I put in, what things would I do? And make sure you stay around to the end because I'm gonna tell you the biggest one that I think will be more beneficial in the future than anything else here. Let's talk about this right now. So the first thing is one of the things we get asked about a lot, tankless water heaters. Tankless water heaters are great because of a couple of different reasons. Number one, the ROI on them is great if it doesn't cost you a lot to install it. So think about it. If you're building a brand new house, it's easy to do it then. You don't have to try to retrofit things. You don't have to pull a bigger circuit over. You don't have to run a bigger gas line over. You don't have to install an electrical line if there's not one there. There are so many things that you don't have to worry about that if I was building a new home today, I would definitely go a tankless water heater. Maybe even two on different ends of the house. That way I don't have to worry about a water circulation system. So if I was going tankless for an electric, I would probably go true tankless. I've done a lot of research on these and I got to tell you, I think compared to a lot of the other electric tankless water heaters, I really like this. I think it's a good product. I think that they're set up well, they're designed well, and they give you the GPMs you need. Don't just buy the cheapest tankless water heater. Make sure that you check your GPMs. What kind of gallon per minute can it get through on the delta that you're looking for? Here in Dallas, our average water temperature of water coming in out of the ground is about 70 degrees. So if I'm wanting to go from 70 to 140, that's a 70 degree rise. Now, to be honest, why do that? Why not make it maybe 100 to 110, now I've got a 40 degree rise, now I don't need as big a water heater, and when I'm in my shower, turn it closer to the hot, that way I get more hot water, and it'll get me right where I wanna be. Now, if I've got two of these, that's fine because I'm putting a load demand on one water heater, so if somebody's in another bathroom, they're doing the other. If I'm going tankless gas, I'm probably going Bradford White. And the reason being, look, it's a new to market tankless water heater for them, but they understand water heaters. And I've gone up to iTech, I've studied their water heaters, I've taken their tankless apart, I really like it. I think there's a lot of good things about it and it's really easy to work on. If you maintain these like you're supposed to, you flush them, you do all the things you're supposed to do, a tankless water heater can last you many years. And like I said, installing it in a new build, instead of waiting till later and trying to retrofit it, it's gonna save you money and make this a great investment. Now the next one I'm gonna talk about is really two of them. I've done this to my house and I love it. It's a whole house water filtration system system and an anti-scale device. And I did both. I went the biggest whole house water filtration system because it does what I needed to do. And the one that I went, Plumber's Choice Water and Flowtech, which is really the same company, but Plumber's Choice Water does the water filtration system. Flowtech is the anti-scale device. But what I did is I went the biggest water filtration tank and what I like about Plumber's Choice, there's no maintenance on it. Literally, when we did the calculations, figured out how much water I used, the size filtration system I was going, I may need to change the carbon filter in about 20 years. 20, two zero, two zero. 20 years. I have people call me out all the time that have a system that they've bought at the local box store or the local green awareness store. They've got filters, they've got carbon, things that they have to work on or change every six months to a year. I can't get people to flush their normal water heaters once a year. Do you really think people are gonna come out every six months and change their carbon or change their filters or do all that? Eventually, it just slips. Now it's like you don't even have a water filter anyway. The best thing about the filter is it removes chlorine and chloramine from your water. I remember before I got mine, I was brushing my teeth one morning and the chlorine smelled so strong that it blew my mind. So that's when I checked it and realized the chlorine level in our water was almost 4.0. That's high considering a pool's supposed to be 1.0. But we've gotta have chlorine in there because it kills the mold, mildew, and bacteria and keeps it out of our public drinking supply system. That's a great thing. We just don't want to ingest it. That's why I got the filtration system for my house. Now, the anti-scale device is for if your water is hard. If your water is hard, like ours is here in the North Central Texas area, we needed an anti-scale system. It protects my cartridges, my lavatories, my faucets. It protects my toilet, my fill valve. It protects my kitchen sink. It protects my dishwasher, my ice maker, and my washing machine. It protects things that most people wouldn't even think are part of the plumbing system. And what it does, it keeps the calcium and magnesium from building up inside there 
and causing problems. That's why to me, if you're building a new house, this is a great investment. One thing that I would tell you here, try to install this system in your garage. You can bury them out in the yard and we've done that for customers, but as I get to my next item, and when I tell you the way I'd pop it into the house, I allow for a water filtration system. Okay, so the next one is the water supply piping. Me, I would go Upanor. And I like Upanor because it is continuously trying to shrink down back to its normal size, so it's continuously squeezing on that fitting. What I love about that is normally there's no leaks. And if you plumb a house right and pipe it in right, you come up through the slab and you protect your pipe coming up through there, put some insulation around it, put some cardboard around it, put something around it where that pipe is not just up against the concrete and every time the water is turned on and off, it moves and rubs into it, you don't wanna create a spot that leaks can happen. The Upanor system I love because it's easy to run, it's labor saving, and with the right tools, everything goes in quick. I like to upsize my water system too, just to make sure I never have any problem if I wanna increase the flow on a shower head or different things like that. So, Upanor water supply system, I love. What I told you about the tip from last one, I think if I was roughing in a house, I would not put a valve box outside. I would loop the water line all the way inside into the garage on an interior wall where I had a valve. That way I could turn the water off to my entire house without having to go out to the meter. Another neat thing about that is if I'm gonna loop up in there, I'm also gonna come up and create a bypass in there so that I can install a water filtration system right there. Now there's no additional piping. I've literally got my unit right there. I supply in, I supply out, close the valve in between, it's a done deal. And I like this idea and I think that houses built in the future should be done this way to keep homeowners from having to go out into their yard to turn off the water in case of an emergency. Another thing I like about the PEX coming in like that is once it does, you could go to a manifold system and split and where you've got isolation valves for every single fixture. Now you've still got the angle stops underneath, but wouldn't it be nice to know that you've got a line that branches off that goes to the master toilet. So in case you need to change that angle stop because the rubber in it went bad, you could shut off the valve at the manifold, not have to drain down the whole house, shut that off, make that repair, turn it back on, flush it out, and you're good. There's a lot of things that I think as new home builders we should be looking at and designing that way. The sewer system, I would definitely go PVC. Look, I like cast iron, but I understand that iron underground in a moist area like that, it starts to rust the day we install it. Now don't get me wrong, I have crawled up under houses here in Dallas that are almost 80 years old. Cut into the cast iron line and it looked pristine. I mean, thick wall, no problem. I mean, it looked good on the outside. Once we wiped it off, it looked great. So I know that cast iron can last a long time too, but I look at it as, okay, the PVC will give a little flex. It'll move a little bit. So in case the house shifts, maybe your PVC shifts with it a little bit. One thing I would do too is sleeve PVC coming through the slab. That way, if it does move a little bit, it doesn't pull on the pipe. It does not cause a slab leak under the house that could lead to other foundation problems. Guys here in North Central Texas, the ground shifts a little bit. I'm saying as plumbers, when we're building houses, we could do certain things that will help these houses last longer without any problem. Now, one of the last things that I would do would be an instant hot at the kitchen sink. Now, the reason being is some people that like coffee or hot tea or even soups, this is a great tool to add and it's easy to do when you build it. You install an electrical outlet down there, you have a water line there already there for it, you go ahead and run it over, now you have an instant hot there. And the brand that I like is actually Insincorator, the same people that make the garbage disposals. And speaking of while you're there building it, put in a big garbage disposal, put in the biggest, quietest one that they have. They normally have stainless steel innards, so they're gonna last longer and they're gonna be so much quieter. Now for the big tip, and this is one that I'm telling you, think about this while you're building your house. Put an electrical outlet near your toilets. What? I know that sounds crazy and right now you're thinking, oh my God, I'm never gonna have a toilet that plugs in. Okay, you don't have to, but maybe one day you're gonna want a bidet toilet seat or a bidet toilet. And these are becoming more popular over here. Now think about this, we've been fighting each other looking for toilet paper. 
Thank God I found the Cottonelle flushable wipes because they're amazing. But we have been fighting each other trying to get up and down the aisles for toilet paper. We've walked in stores and they've been empty. Wouldn't it be nice to sit down on a warm toilet seat, hit a button, and it works? Guys, if you've got an electrical outlet right there by your toilet, that's an option for you. If you've got any other ideas or things that you've tried on a new house, why you built it, that made it easier to do, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'm curious as to what you think is worth doing it in the beginning. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.